we shall discuss about the Deccan Volcanic Province. It is an important litho unit in the Indian geology that marks the end Cretaceous. Very, very important event. And the Deccan Volcanic Province is one of the large igneous provinces of the world. And it covers the maximum area. The Deccan Volcanic Province covers the maximum area. It covers the entire Deccan Plateau and these are all continental flood basalts. So, we can understand one thing that these are the lava flows which have come up by the silent eruptions. Silent eruptions. They are commonly known as Deccan traps. The word trap here is used for these rocks because they uh, cover a large area which is lava flow. Then there are sediments like this. These are sediments and then again a layer of lava flow. That is why we call them as traps while these sediments over here they are called as intertrapean beds. Intertrapean beds. These are huge and they cover an area of 500,000 square kilometer in the western and central part of India. Central part of India. Thickness is approximately 3,000 meters, the average thickness in total. These are the important deposits of tholytic basalts, picritic basalts, and alkaline basalt. So these are the uh, type of basalts which have been exposed in this region. It erupted close to the Cretaceous tertiary boundary at 65 million years and this eruption is associated with the catastrophic events like the mass extinction which this mass extinction is not the result of this uh, volcanic eruption only, but also a bolide impact and global climate change. This bolide impact, if you don't know what is bolide, then you can also use the word asteroid impact. Asteroid impact. So we can see here in this map of India, the western portion, almost entire Maharashtra, Maharashtra, some parts of Gujarat, and Madhya Pradesh. These are the major portions which uh, uh, are covered. And then yes, of course, Goa and some parts of Karnataka. Here, this uh, uh, Deccan volcanic province, it expands. If we have a look at the map of the flood basalts of the world, the large igneous provinces, then one thing we all should understand that all of these igneous provinces have formed by the hot spot activity. Hot spot activity. What is a hot spot activity? If let us say that uh, there is some magmatism happening over here, and at the same time, a plate is passing over, or let us make this this direction. If, if a plate is passing over this hot spot, so the areas which come exactly over this, they are affected by this hot spot activity and there these uh, flood basalts, they have been formed. There are several of these uh, volcanic provinces and associated 
flood basalts. So the Deccan flood basalt, which is here, it is formed by this hot spot, which is the reunion hot spot. Reunion hot spot. So we all should understand that the Deccan flood basalts were the result of reunion hot spot activity. Similarly, the Raj Mahal was because of the Kerguelen hot spot activity. So these are now the islands in the Indian Ocean. Some other important uh, flood basalts like the uh, the Karu Karu flood basalt in southern Africa. It is the uh, result of the Bovet Bovet hot spot. Then uh, Parana flood basalt is because of Tristan da Cunha flood uh, hot spot. Then the this portion over here, the isthmus of Panama and the adjoining regions are because of the Galapagos hot spot. And then of course the Caribbean is because of this. Then uh, uh, so in this map we can see several of these hot spot activities are here, which have led to the formation of the important flood basalt provinces. They are genetically linked to the different hot spots. So the beginning and the end of Cretaceous period in India witnessed large amount of lava flows and uh, huge volcanic explosions. So in the early lower Cretaceous, that is this time period, around 20,000 km square area of the eastern Indian Raj Mahal in Jharkhand and Silhet in the Meghalaya. So these were formed, so Silhet traps and the Raj Mahal traps, uh, they were formed in the early Cretaceous. And uh, this portion, uh, do not use this word early lower Cretaceous, rather use early early Cretaceous, sorry for that. So uh, the Raj Mahal and the Silhet, they were formed during the early early Cretaceous and the Raj Mahal hills or the Raj Mahal traps were the result of the Kerguelen hotspot activity. Towards the close of Cretaceous, the Deccan volcanic uh, province was formed. So the eastern part of India, if we try to draw a schematic map, in the Bihar and uh, Jharkhand region over here and West Bengal, near close to West Bengal, it is the Raj Mahal volcanic province, while in the western part of India, it is the Deccan volcanic province. While of the two, the age for this is close to 115 million years, while this is around 65 million years. So the Raj Mahal volcanic province is older than the Deccan volcanic province. Okay. The Deccan volcanic province has been divided in four main sub provinces. These main four sub provinces, they are in the central Indian portion and western India. The main volcanic province is the Deccan volcanics, that is, we call as the Deccan plateau. So, this is the main Deccan plateau. Then, this one, the Malwa trap, this is the Malwa plateau. The Mandala plat Mandala lobe actually, and then the Surashtra plateau. These are the four main uh, sub provinces of the uh, Deccan volcanic province, and if you remember, then. This is the portion from where the Narmada Son lineament passes.
So this is Narmada Son Lineament. So the to study the Deccan traps or the Deccan volcanics, the best location is the main Deccan plateau, which is exposed in the Western Ghats. And it, this area lies in the western Maharashtra, known as the Sahyadri group, the Sahyadris. So you should remember this map. If this question is asked about the uh, Deccan volcanic province, you should draw the peninsular part of India and then draw these four locations. The Sahyadri group is further divided into four subgroups which are Kalsubai, Lunavala, Wai and Mahabaleshwar. The Kalsubai subgroup is divided into the Salher formation and Ratangal formation which is then later divided into lower and upper Ratangal formations. Lunavala is divided into Indrayani, Karla and Elephanta. Y is divided into Deveghat, Purandargad and Mahabaleshwar is divided into the Mahabaleshwar formation. So, the Salher formation, it consists of simple Pahoho lava flows. I am sure you all know what these mean, Pahoho lava flows. If you don't remember, kindly revise it. Pahoho lava flows of phyric, phyric to feldspar phyric nature. Now, what is what does this word phyric mean? Sometimes in igneous rocks, the word porphyritic texture is replaced by the word phyric. The Ratangar formation it comprises of compound lava flows. The Ratangar, now it consists of compound lava flows. It is separated from the underlying Salher formation by giant plagioclase basalt. So we will see what it means. So this was this over here, it is the giant plagioclase basalt GBP. So what is GBP? GBP is giant plagioclase basalt. This horizon, it consists of huge uh, phenocris of plagioclase and it is also known as mega crest horizon. Mega Crist Horizon. The Indrayani formation of the Lunavala subgroup it overlies the Ratangad formation and is again separated by the GBP formation. Giant plagioclase basalt. It consists of simple flows of columnar joints consisting of columnar, columnar joints and a phyric type so the indrayani formation it consists of sim, uh, simple flows simple lava flows which are a phyric in nature they don't have phenocris in them the karla formation it is essentially a compound Pahoho lava flow. Pahoho lava flow. Then the Diveghat formation, Elephanta also has the same type of features. The Diveghat formation, it consists of a phyric AA lava flows. A, a lava flows. 
The Purandara gut formation it consists mainly of AA lava flows and simple flows, while the compound flows are in the upper part. So basically, the dominant flow over here is the AA lava flow, and the compound flows are in the upper part. While the topmost Mahabaleshwar formation is separated from the lower unit again by a GBP horizon, and the Mahabaleshwar formation also consists of a, a lava flows and simple feldspar pyric while the Purandar formation and the Mahabaleshwar formation they are separated from each other by the giant plagioclase basalt. Okay, so this is the basic uh, classification and details of the uh, rock types and the types of lava flows in the Sahyadri group. While the Western Deccan Plateau has also been studied in great detail and it has been studied with respect to the chemostratigraphy as well. So the Deccan uh, basalt group of the Western Deccan Plateau, it is divided into three subgroups, the Kalsubai, Lunavala and Y. While the Kalsubai uh, subgroup is divided into these uh, formations starting from Jawahar, Igatpuri, Neral, Thakurwadi, and Bhima Shankar. These five formations, they each formation, mind you, each formation is separated from each other by the giant plagioclase basalt or GBPs. These, uh, the Kalsubai group, it consists of amygdaloidal compound flows. Amygdaloidal compound flows. These are mostly picrites. The rock type mostly is picrite or picritic in nature. It has more than 18% magnesium oxide, and then picritic basalts are also present over here. The picritic basalts, which consist of more than 10% MGO. They have olivine and possibly the clinopyroxene phenocrysts. So, olivine and CPX, clinopyroxene phenocrysts are common. Interestingly, as I have already told you, the giant plagioclase basalt, it separates each of these horizons. The Lunavala subgroup has two formations, Khandala and Boucher formation and they have mostly uh, simple flows having well-developed flow tops. flow tops and as I had told you about the Y subgroup over here, so this Y subgroup, it consists of AA lava flows, mostly AA lava flows which are aphyric in nature, don't have phenomena. Okay, the last phase of Deccan volcanism is represented by the rocks like nepheline cyanide, alkali, trachyte and carbonatite. They occur as intrusive bodies in form of dikes, sheets, plugs cutting across the Deccan lava flows of the main phase. You will find these exposed in the Denodhar hills in uh, Kutch, then places in Saurashtra like Junagar, Osham, uh, Shamardi, Choghat, Bhavnagar and then places like uh, Fenyamata, Ambadongar, Netrang and Barwaha in the Narmada Rift Valley. The Deccan volcanic province is considered to be one of the main reasons for the uh, end Cretaceous extinction. It is thought that the release of volcanic gases, particularly the sulfur dioxide during the formation of traps contributed to the climate change. 
several uh, research data they point out towards a drop of temperature then there have been a lot of debates also over here uh, due to these sulfurous gases which were released, the uh, sudden cooling happened and this led to mass extinction. Apart from it, the bolide impact theory is also used to explain the change in climate that the dust which, uh, uh, which, was, which went up in the atmosphere, it did not allow the sunlight to come on the earth for a long, long time which killed the entire vegetation. And of course, uh, that uh, could be one of the reasons for the mass extinction. This is also known as the impact winter. Several of very important fossils, especially the dinosaurian fossils, have been found in the Deccan volcanic province in the areas of uh, Jabalpur, uh, Nagpur and Balasinor, like that. So, very important uh, dinosaurian fossils, dinosaurian remains and then uh, the plant remains have been found uh, in this region. Sometimes a question is also asked in MCQs about which of uh, the invertebrate fossils is commonly found in the uh, intertrapian beds. So let me tell you the name. It's a gastropod. Gastropod, which is known as Physa. P, uh, sorry, P-H-Y-S-A. Physa bullinus. Physa bullinus. And an important point over here is it is left coiled, left handed coiling or sinistral coiling. Remember that the sinistrally coiled Physa bullinus is uh, the characteristic of the intertrapian. Beds. Okay. Uh, let me add one more slide over here to tell you few things about the uh, giant plagioclase basalts, as I have been mentioning its name. Which are also called as GBPs. The Giant plagioclase basalts, they are also referred to as megacrystic horizons. They have been valuable markers for lava stratigraphy. Uh, the flows that contain unusually large plagioclase phenocryst. Now, when we say uh, large plagioclase phenocryst, then what is the accepted size to be called to be uh, classified as large plagioclase phenocryst? The size normally more than 30 millimeters of plagioclase phenocrysts. So the flows that contain this size of unusually large plagioclase phenocryst, they have average compositional range of anorthite. So the compositional range is of anorthite An 6265. The giant plagioclase basalts are among the most evolved flows which have large abundances of incompatible elements and the smallest mg numbers. So, you should remember this that one of the most uh, evolved flows, large abundance of in compatible elements for example phosphorus titanium zirconium and they have the smallest 
एम जी नंबर्स वेरी लेस अमाउंट ऑफ मैग्नीशियम इन दम एंड दे आर फॉर्म द जी बी पीस द जी बी पीस दे आर फॉर्म एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ various degrees of crystal fractionation so i hope you all now understand what is gbps and this completes this topic this is sufficient enough for uh, writing answers on the stratigraphy of the deccan volcanic province you can use uh, uh, this information to write these answers in even in your upsc gsi examination so i hope you will uh, understand whatever i have told to you thank you